Guyana is one of the fastest growing nations in the world. The recent offshore discovery of around 9 billion barrels of oil means the country's economy is projected to double in the next few years. In the country's capital, Georgetown, the Demerara River is the flowing heart of all the traffic into the city. And this boost in industry means huge freighters now need to use the river. But the waters are scattered with forgotten wrecks, which pose a hazard to these much larger shipping vessels. In 2012, the 55-meter cargo vessel Miss Eliza sank and is currently blocking the busy shipping lanes. So they called in salvage master Bob Schloten, the specialist from Kool in the Netherlands, to remove her. You can see there a small uh, photo of the vessel. This type of shipwreck especially are a real danger for the safe navigation. As soon as the ship is, is hitting the wreck, it will burst open, it, it, it can sink. They need to get this wreck cleared to open up the waterway. But the Demerara River poses some unique challenges. The water here on the Demerara River is very muddy, and we can see the shipwreck is deep inside the clay because the vessel's already a long time. She's laying on her side, and yeah, slowly, slowly, she's going down in, 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 the, in the clay because it's really heavy clay. Sunk an incredible six meters deep into the muddy riverbed. The dense clay is holding her like liquid cement. So to get her out will require a unique approach. To penetrate the thick mud, the crane operator drops a huge 17-ton steel chisel down onto the sunken vessel. After smashing it into manageable pieces, he is able to dig down with a huge grapple and haul the wreckage up piece by piece. But the mud isn't the only issue to contend with. The Demerara River has a very narrow estuary, which causes incredibly fast currents. The 200-ton crane barge has no way of navigating the river. So to get them on target and help them stay there, they rely on Captain Eddie Corsi in his support tug. Our biggest challenge is the, the very strong current. Uh, we are now uh, climbing uh, to the uh, full moon, to the spring tide, and it can be up to four knots uh, here on the river. Uh, uh, that's quite strong. That's a challenge for us. That means that the strong current is, 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 is pushing the barge, of course. There is a lot of weight on the anchors. And for us, maneuvering with the strong current makes it more difficult. I'll show you the position of the vessel at the moment on the uh, electronic uh, chart. As you see, we are here, the red, red vessel. And you can see the wreck we are working on at the moment, Miss Elisa. The barge is on one, two, three, four anchors. To maneuver the 200-ton crane barge in the fast currents, she is attached to four anchor points. By tightening or slacking each of these lines, the barge is able to move in all directions whilst remaining steady against the current. So far, they have brought up a mountain of smaller pieces. You see, this is the result of, of hammering with a big chisel. That's how we cut the barge of the vessel in small pieces. And it makes it easier for us to take it out from the sea back. Well, here you see the big stockpile of, of scrap. Uh, the scrap is going to um, an iron mill where they're going to reuse it. Basically, from here, we transport it first to uh, Paramaribo, Suriname, to our yard. And from there, it's sold to some scrap dealers. And then they, yeah, recycle it. In order to make room for huge chunks of the boat on board this barge, the crew on the deck has to work together to organize this enormous pile of scrap. Overseeing this massive operation is crane trainee Kevin Turto de Chroma from neighboring Suriname. I work on the small excavator, and uh, yeah, that's what I do. Working with excavator with machines, that's what I like, what I love. While Kevin works in the excavator to stack the shredded ship, he relies on the ground crew of cutters to break them down into manageable pieces. Some of the pieces are big. If they are too big, I can't pile it up. 
so they have to cut it down a little bit smaller so I could pile it up. On the deck, cutter Guido Marshall uses high-powered welding torches to cut the pieces into small enough chunks for Kevin to stack. We remove the big pieces from the ripper, and then I'm putting it in scrap size so that it can fit on the porch. Today, they are hoping to bring a huge portion of the midsection on board. But locating the section of the boat they want to remove is no easy task, as the heavily silted water makes cameras impossible, meaning the crane operator must work by touch alone. The only thing we have is that photo. Based on that, the crane driver, he has more or less a picture in his mind how the vessel is situated on the bottom. The crane driver is, is very experienced and by lowering the grab onto the vessel, he can feel it in his crane. No cameras, nothing. It's purely a mechanical grab. Working like this takes an incredible amount of skill. But luckily, with 42 years experience, crane operator Henry von der Mula is one of the best in the business. I have my plate, and if I know where the front is, I start with that and I Take a look how the pieces are coming out, and then, uh, okay, this is this, and then I know where I am. Henry feels the outline of the ship, and once he is happy, drops the huge 17-ton steel crashing down on the wreck. We are still working with the chisel. As soon as he thinks he's finished, then we're going to change that chisel, the big plate, for the wreck wrap. The current is especially strong, and it's making it impossible to accurately cut. Well, here is quite difficult, especially with a big chisel. That's a big plate. And as soon as it touches the water, you will see the current is, is pushing her away. So the crane operator is all the time adjusting the boom and, and try to get the correct position. But it is quite tricky. And wow, it's quite strong current already. A strong current means the chisel can easily get snapped off or trapped. No replacements. It would mean a huge problem for the operation. If there is a lot of current, then the current is pushing the chisel away, which means if he's not going straight down, but the current is pushing him away, the chisel can slide into the mud and can be stuck in the bottom. You can lose the chisel very easily. Yo, Eddie! Whoa. It's tricky, you have to see the plate, it's a really a problem. With the currents finally slacking, crane operator Henry sets to work, dropping the huge 17-ton chisel used to break up the wreck. After multiple drops, Henry thinks he has a small enough section to bring on board. I think he's through, so now he's in two and uh, we can pick it up. So they switch over to the huge grapple claw. This is the big uh, grapnel hanging on the crane, lowering it on top of the ship rack, and then he's picking it up, lifting it up, and dumps it here on deck. He begins by bringing up some of the smaller pieces which have broken off. Now it's breaking loose. Then digs his grapple into the huge section they have been targeting. But as it comes up, he might have bitten off more than he can chew. This is a very heavy piece. The section is around 50 tons, but caked in heavy mud and clay, its weight is doubled, causing the crane to strain under the weight. This is the, the biggest problem here. You have a lot of mud. When you have the clay, that will stuck in the frack, and then, it is, uh, then you have a problem to Bring them on board. The huge section is too heavy to safely lift onto the barge. But if he drops it, the piece could break apart and wash away down the river. This is the biggest one up to now. Oh, it's all falling apart. This is where the fast currents can be used to their advantage. Henry decides to give it a bath carefully dipping the huge chunk of ship into the fast-flowing river to help remove the heavy mud. 
I shake it off in the river, otherwise it is too heavy. You cannot uh, get them here on the barge. And with the heavy clay washed off, he's able to gradually bring it on board. Oh, uh, now it looks better. I think you can make it, this one. Bringing up this massive section intact takes them a huge step closer to clearing the waterway. It was around uh, 50 tons, so it was a nice piece. Most of the time, I want to have this. <laughs> then I can go home. <laughs> In Guyana, on the Demerara River, salvage master Bob Schloot and his crew from the Netherlands have been working for a week clearing a sunken vessel that is blocking this important shipping lane. The wreck is nearly cleared, but recent storms are making the operation much more difficult and dangerous. Our biggest challenge here is the weather. Rain, heavy rain, it makes it dangerous the last couple of weeks. Every day we have some rain, and with the mud on the deck, it's, it's slippery, so you must be careful. And yeah, but we continue working. With everything now covered in a thick layer of mud, Kevin and the team of cutters have to work fast to keep the deck clear in these dangerous conditions. OK, guys, right now, I'm going to do some cleaning up with all the small scrap. Piling it up, the small pieces, and clean up the deck. It's a rainy weather. It's pretty slippery, muddy, so we got a lot of cleaning up to do. You can put something and it can fall on you, or you can slip, maybe all the mud is on the deck. You can slip from that and get an accident. Finally, they bring up the final load from the crane. OK, it might be the last pieces we can find here on the bottom. Normally, when we start removing a shipwreck like this, we work from one way to one end to the other end. The last pieces which came up were the anchor winch with the anchor from the bow section. We got now in total four anchors on deck. We found two bigger anchors and bigger chain that are apparently from the vessels who were here before, who tried to remove the shipwreck, but they failed. And probably their anchor chain was stuck in the shipwreck. Yeah, then you can't do anything. Then you need to cut your chain and leave it on the bottom. And we recovered it now. So, uh, you can see it on deck, the big pile of uh, chain, anchor chain. Before the job is complete, they must survey the riverbed to ensure no dangerous wreckage remains hidden beneath the surface. There is a uh, survey boat coming who will survey the area where the shipwreck was uh, to see if everything is removed or if there are still small pieces somewhere around on the bottom. And they have finished just in time as the survey boat has arrived a day early. They will need to scramble to move the huge crane barge as they are right on top of the area that needs surveying. The Cola 42, Bob. Yeah, Bob, uh, this is Cola 42, Chief Officer speaking. Over. Hi, Chief. Hey, can you please inform the captain that we're going to shift the barge because the survey boat is coming within an hour? The crew are on a shift break, but Bob needs them to jump back into action fast. Everybody a radio, we're going to move. The survey boat is coming. It will take all the crew to coordinate and manage the four huge anchor cables and move the barge safely out of the way. OK, everybody to a winch. Bob will coordinate his team to slacken the top two anchors and tighten the bottom pair in order to pull the barge away from the salvage area. The team has to work quickly. The survey boat won't wait, and if they miss their slot, it might not return for days or even weeks. OK, stop. They get her moved just in time, and the boat is able to complete its survey. The results are in. They did a uh, detailed survey of the area where the wreck was, and we got the positive result. The shipwreck was gone, site is clear, so we were happy. 
Despite working blindly, Bob and the crew have completely removed the 55-meter trawler from the riverbed, meaning one less hazard in the busy waterway. When you work so many days, long hours here on the job uh, to remove the shipwreck, and finally everything is gone, it gives you a, a great feeling, good satisfaction, job well done. A great achievement for all of us uh, that we succeeded.